Uh, welcome to the Backyard Professors again. <clears throat> it's a uh, extremely windy day today. I'm going to talk about the uh, Book of Mormon again, some more. You can never exhaust that magnificent Book of Mormon. No matter how hard you try, it's just not possible to do. I've been exploring the theme of angels and sacred books. I think it's a fascinating theme to... Uh, Realize that Joseph Smith didn't just make this up to make this seem more ancient or different from our modern world or our modern view and interpretation. In the ancient world, angels really did bring and take back books. They really did guard the heavenly secret records. And it is so fascinating to see this theme so powerful in the ancient literatures. And so I've been discussing, been, I've been reading about this theme of angels in sacred literature, sacred books, in John Twetness's book, The Book of Mormon and Other Hidden Books, Out of Darkness Unto Light. This is by Cornerstone Publishing. Actually, this is by Farms. I lied. See, I'm invalid already. I'm lying like crazy. For the year 2000, he discusses, among many themes, the theme of the ancient records being written on metal, the ancient records being hidden away to come forth in a later day. His theme on angels as guardians of the hidden books is extremely interesting. It's chapter 5 of this particular text, and... As John Twetness can only do, he's one of the most thorough, most interesting LDS scholars and authors that I've got in my library. I never fail to find inspiration with his writings. If you can read anything by John Twetness, you watch him. The Twetness, it's T-V-E-D-T-N-E-S. Twetness. I, I believe it's Swedish, he told me once. And he says you're supposed to call him by... Twetness, I've called him Tvetness for years, so if I go back and forth, who cares? The point is, it's his material that's important. Well, he probably cares. I certainly don't mean it disrespectful for him. But Of course, uh, Joseph Smith says Moroni came and brought the uh, Book of Mormon to him. Through a series of meetings over the course of four years, Moroni got the Book of Mormon into Joseph Smith's hands, and of course, from that point on, Joseph translated the book. Now, a number of ancient documents indicate that sacred records really are kept by angels. And usually these documents indicate that the books are kept in the heavenly temple. And the point of their existence, the purpose, is to be used at the last day to judge the works of men. For example, in 2 Enoch 52.15, we read that the books written in heaven will be produced on the judgment day. Now, in his vision of the Latter-day Judgment, Enoch saw the opening of sealed books. This is very interesting because many of the books are sealed precisely as Moroni showed Joseph Smith the Book of Mormon was sealed. And we still don't have the full record. We only have a third of the Book of Mormon. Most of it was sealed and not supposed to come forth just yet. So the idea was Enoch saw the opening of sealed books and an angel keeping a record who stood beside the Lord. Now this is an intriguing development. This theme of Enoch's visions, angels and heavenly books. It's a very powerful one. It's interesting that in another one of Enoch's visions, an angel brought the Lord's book recording men's deeds from the storehouse and he explained to Enoch and the Enoch copied them from 366 books in 30 days. And the point of the books was the other vision showed that the archangel Uriel showed Enoch a book of astronomy. It was to teach him the mysteries of the ancients and what they had done in their lifetimes. It was to teach them the sciences, the ancient philosophy and the sciences, especially astronomy fascinating. The vision of Rabbi Ishmael recorded in the book of 3rd Enoch 
described the heavenly scrolls that were written by angels themselves, not just men's deeds, but angels themselves, and they contained the books of the dead and the books of the living. According to the vision, God will judge the world based on the information on a scroll kept in a box and guarded by an angel in charge of the archives. Such documents such as these, Twetness says, are destined to be opened and read in the heavenly court. Ishmael saw the heavenly scribes who stood near God in heaven. That's 30, 33, and 2. The archangel Metatron, who was otherwise identified as Enoch in other visions, Metatron himself, in his mortal life known as Enoch, he's one that gave Ishmael the books containing the deeds of the wicked. And Enoch was allowed to read that. That's 3rd Enoch 44 and 9. Similarly, the Book of Mormon plates were kept in a box, and they will be used to judge the world. That's one of the big themes that Moroni discussed with Joseph Smith. Now we know that that's one of the purposes of all of these ancient, hidden, sacred records that were kept by angels. Even Abraham himself gets in on the act here. He's shown a large book on a table at the gates <clears throat> leading to heaven and hell. On either side of the table is an angel with papyrus, pen, and ink. One angel records the deeds of the righteous, while the other records the sins of mankind. And the soul of the dead are to be judged by these records. That's in the Testament of Abraham. As the Book of Mormon opens up, Lehi himself was given a book to read. From that book, he learned of the fate of the city of Jerusalem, according to 1 Nephi 1, 11 through 13. He also learned about the coming of the Messiah. And later, Lehi's son Nephi experienced the same vision in which he saw the books that are clearly the Bible and the Book of Mormon and other related scriptures. This record-keeping theme of books being recorded by both men and angels, both on hev in heaven and on earth, is very powerfully caught in the Book of Mormon. We now know, thanks to multitudinous ancient records, that this theme, this is the proper cultural pattern in the ancient world with several of the ancient patriarchs and prophets. Nephi learned that what he had seen would later be recorded by the Apostle John in what we now know as the book of Revelation. And isn't it interesting that an angel keeps coming down to John and describing and discussing and teaching him about what his vision meant, exactly like the angel did with Nephi. This theme from antiquity is the teaching from as, as above, so below. This is the ancient hermetic doctrine. What we learn about in the heavens comes from the books from heaven, as well as from the books of the prophets that have been recorded through time, buried in the earth, to come forth in a later day. The Dead Sea Scrolls are a perfect example of just this style of bookkeeping and book preservation from antiquity. In the book of Jubilees, which is called the Leptogenesis, the little Genesis, because it's a rewriting of the Genesis record in the stories of the patriarchs, we read that Jacob, during his second vision at Bethel, when returning from Syria, he read from seven heavenly tablets that were brought to him from the angel. The tablets recorded all that would happen to his sons in the future. It's very interesting that Jacob documented this and everything else he saw in the vision. The story is told in the first person when we read about it in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The fragments 4Q537, which is sometimes called the Apocryphon of Jacob. Now, the 10th century Arab chronographer al Qasai noted that prior to his death, Adam told Seth that he had seen in a heavenly vision what was written on the canopy of the Lord's throne and the gates of paradise, the layers of the heavens, and the leaves of the tuba tree. The prophet Isaiah is said to have been taken to the seventh heaven, where, like Abraham before him, he saw Abel, Enoch, and others. Now, this is in the martyrdom of Isaiah. And the ascension of Isaiah, an angel brought him heavenly books that named the deeds of the children of Israel. And a similar... Well, there goes, the, there goes my hat. Crack. Here comes the wind. 
crap. I better go get that. That's a nice hat. Hang on. Take a break. Pop some popcorn. <laughs> Sheesh.